During an address at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum, Putin was unapologetic regarding what Russia terms its special military operation in Ukraine. In the current situation, against a backdrop of increasing risks for us and threats, Russia's decision to conduct a special military operation was forced difficult, of course, but forced and necessary, Putin said of the invasion, which began in February. He repeated his claim that the invasion was primarily intended to defend Russian-speaking people in the eastern Donbass region of Ukraine. Ukraine and much of the world counter that the Russian invasion is a lethal violation of international law, which aims to unsettle its neighbor, topple an elected president, and scare other former Soviet-era satellites away from seeking further integration with organizations like the EU or NATO. In a tweet posted by Peter Schiff, he says Putin is dangerous because of how knowledgeable he is about the U.S. economy and inflation. Welcome to Savvy Economists. Today we would be discussing the controversies surrounding the Russian-Ukraine war and its relationship with the global economy and how the U.S. is trying to put the blame on the invasion instead of accepting the role they had to play majorly in the inflation and global recession. As we dive deeper into the topic, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe and keep your notifications on. Once the Russian president took the stage in the western Russian city, he wasted no time on pleasantries and went straight into attacks on the United States and its allies. They live in the past on their own under their own delusions. They think that they have one and then everything else is a colony, a backyard. And the people living there are second-class citizens, he said, adding that Russia's special operation, the phrase the Russian government uses to describe its war on Ukraine, has become a lifesaver for the West to blame all the problems on Russia. After accusing Western countries of blaming their problems on Russia, Putin tried to pin the blame for rising food prices on the U.S. administration and the Euro bureaucracy. Куда потекли все эти средства? Очевидно, на, в том числе на закупку товаров и услуг за пределами западных стран. Вот куда они потекли эти деньги, напечатаны. Они буквально стали пылесосить, выгребать глобальные рынки. Об интересах других государств, в том числе беднейших, естественно, никто не думал и думать-то не хотел. Им оставляли только, что называется, как у нас в народе говорят, ошметки, да еще и по астрономическим ценам. Так если в конце 2019 года импорт, завоз товаров в Соединенные Штаты составлял порядка 250 миллиардов долларов в месяц, то к настоящему времени он вырос до 350 миллиардов долларов. Примечательно, что рост составил 40%. В пропорции это как раз и соответствует необеспеченной ничем на, на качке долларовой денежной массы последних лет. Вот напечатали, и за эти, раздали деньги, и за эти деньги выгребли все товары с рынков третьих стран. Добавлю вот еще что. Соединенные Штаты долгое время были крупными поставщиками продовольствия на мировом рынке. Заслуженно, действительно, заслуженно гордились и было чем своим сельским хозяйством, традициями фермерства. Ну и это пример для многих и для нас, кстати говоря, тоже. Но сегодня роль Америки изменилась кардинально. Из нетто-экспортера продовольствия она превратилась в чистого импортера. Грубо говоря, печатают деньги и перетягивают на себя товарные потоки, скупая продукты питания по всему свету. Еще более высокие темпы наращивания импорта товаров наблюдаются в Евросоюзе. Понятно, что такое резкое увеличение спроса необеспеченного товарным предложением запустило волну дефицитов и глобальную инфляцию. Вот она откуда, это глобальная инфляция. За последние пару лет в мире подорожало практически все. Сырье, потребительские товары и особенно продукты питания. Да, конечно, эти страны, в том числе и Штаты, они продолжают импортировать. Но баланс между экспортом и импортом уже в другую сторону. Там уже, по-моему, 17 миллиардов больше импорта, чем, чем экспорт. Вот в чем все дело. Ukraine is a major food producer, but the Russian invasion has affected its entire production and supply chain. The United Nations has said the war has had a devastating impact on supplies and prices and warned it could push up to 49 million more people into famine or famine-like conditions. European Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen said last week that food has become part of the Kremlin's arsenal of terror. Ukrainian officials have accused Russia of stealing Ukrainian grain, accusations that appear to have been confirmed by satellite images showing Russian ships being loaded with Ukrainian grain. On top of that, 
Russia is blocking maritime access to the Black Sea ports held by Ukraine, meaning that even the grain that is still under Ukrainian control cannot be exported to the many countries that rely on it. On the same day that the European Commission recommended that Ukraine be granted EU candidacy, Putin said he had no objection to Ukraine's bid for membership. The EU isn't a military organization, so Russia is not against Ukraine joining the EU, he said. Putin insisted Russia would meet all its goals in Ukraine, which he notably defined as freedom for the Donbass, the eastern Ukrainian region where Russian troops are locked in fierce fighting with Ukrainian forces. Putin had initially pursued regime change in Kiev. Putin also repeated earlier assertions that a blitzkrieg of Western sanctions had failed to destroy the Russian economy, as hoped by the West. The Kremlin's own economic development minister, however, expects the country's economy will shrink by 7.8% this year, and the central bank chief said it's unlikely to bounce back soon. But in Putin's view, sanctions primarily damaged the very countries issuing them. He pointed to the European Union in particular as having committed economic suicide by cutting back on Russian natural gas and oil imports that much of the EU relies on. Putin acknowledged that Western sanctions presented Russia with challenges, including a sudden lack of some consumer goods, but argued that Russia would come out stronger in the long run. What is more important for us? To be independent, self-sufficient and guarantee our own future development, said Putin. Or to have some cardboard packaging today? Russian President Vladimir Putin said during a speech on June that those blaming him for surging inflation don't know how to read or write, directly mocking President Joe Biden, who's pinned much of the cause of four-decade high inflation on Putin's price hike. Putin made the remarks during an appearance at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum, Russia's equivalent of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, that barred Russians from this year's event. The so-called Putin inflation in the West is an idea based on pure stupidity, Putin said according to a translation of his comments provided by the New York Times. Though Putin didn't mention Biden by name, the American leader has been quick to point the finger at Putin in the past, saying in April 70% of the increase in inflation was the consequence of Putin's price hike. Biden is partially right, gas prices and food prices have surged following Russia's invasion, contributing to the sharp rise in consumer prices, but inflation in the U.S. is continuing a trend that started well before Putin ordered the invasion of Ukraine in February. Putin also claimed Western leaders are using Russia as a life buoy to deflect blame for economic woes and said the U.S. declared itself God's own representatives on Earth, people who have no responsibilities in other points of the speech, according to a translation from Max Seddon of the Financial Times. Peter Schiff agrees to the fact that Putin is correct with his points about the role U.S. government has played on inflation and suggests that a dollar crash would be a solution to the problem. It is not to be denied that President Biden has made several decisions that have led to increased inflation and the United States as a whole were the forebearers of the global economic breakdown. It still doesn't excuse the fact that the Russia-Ukraine war added to the inflation we see today especially in energy and food production and transport, but totally blaming the Russians for the inflation is unnecessary and a callous lie. Let us know in the comment section what you think about the stand by the Russian government and what the best call of action is in your opinion. Also don't forget to like this video, subscribe and turn on post notifications. Thanks for watching.